Hi, my name's Andy and you're watching Andy's Book Club. So today we're moving right on ahead with The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. Now in chapter one, we're going to talk about a topic which I'm sure is everybody's favorite topic of the world, STDs. So without further ado, let's move on ahead. So chapter one begins with Baltimore. So our story in Baltimore begins with a 500% surge in the amount of children born with syphilis in the years between 1995 and 1996. Now, this is obviously a cause for concern and nobody knew exactly what was causing this huge surge in syphilis, which if you guys don't know is a sexually transmitted disease. Now, this is obviously a problem for the town and a lot of people have come up with different explanations as to what exactly happened. So the government blamed the crack cocaine problem. Now, this is not, this is probably part of the problem, but it's also not a very satisfactory explanation because, you know, crack cocaine has always been a problem in Baltimore and it didn't suddenly become a lot worse in 1995 versus 1996. Sure, it might have gotten a little bit worse compared to previous years, but maybe not enough to cause a 500% surge in sexually transmitted diseases like syphilis. Now, a researcher from the Johns Hopkins University, uh, his name is John Zenoman, and Zenoman basically said that maybe it was due to uh, budget cuts. So what he means by that is that uh, the city of Baltimore was experiencing a financial crisis and they were cutting the budgets of medical personnel. So there weren't as many doctors and nurses available. So maybe that's part of the reason where uh, maybe if someone showed up with syphilis, they would turn that person away because they just didn't have enough resources to help that person. Now, another person, John Potterite, who was the chief of police said that uh, it was due to the demolition projects that was going on in Baltimore. So the demolition projects basically means that they were renovating a part of town and then basically they were trying to get people out of the slums or out of the really run down parts of the town and they were just tearing down buildings and making new ones. But the problem is that a lot of the people that lived in those run down buildings, they're really poor and they most often are, let's say, drug users or people who are just down on their luck and people who might have uh, sexually transmitted diseases like syphilis and whatnot. And when you tear down their houses, uh, they're homeless and they're stragglers and they have nowhere to go. So they just flood into other places of the town and infect other people. So maybe that was part of the reason why uh, syphilis increased so much. So all of these small things together may not have individually contributed or individually caused the huge surge in syphilis. But when you put all those together, it made a huge difference. So this book is mainly going to focus on three things, namely being the law of the few, the stickiness factor, and the power of context. And we're going to go through examples of each and explain what each of those means. So let's begin with the law of the few. So the law of the few it's like the 80-20 rule if you ever heard of it. So the 80-20 rule, if you're not familiar with that, is that uh, let's say in a company, right? So in a company, 80% of the work is done by 20% of the employees. Now, I'm not gonna say which part of the 80-20 you're in. So maybe you're part of the 20% of the employees that do 80% of the work, which in case that sucks for you because you got more work, but maybe you get to be one of those people that chillax. The majority of people, uh, they do 20% of the work. So the point is that 80% uh, of, let's say the wealth in the world is owned by 20% of the people. Now I think these days, maybe the skew is even further, right? Maybe it's like 90% of the world's wealth is owned by 10% of the people. It's just a general phenomenon that you see in the world, but it could be even more skewed, right? So what's another example? Maybe. Uh, for example, 80% of women find 20% of men attractive and vice versa as well. So you can apply the 80-20 rule to just about anything. 80% of the work that you do contributes to 20% of your success and 20% of the work you do contributes to 80% of your success. So that's just another example. So that's the 80-20 rule and the law of the few is like the 80-20 rule but it's even more extreme. So going back to the wealth example I told you earlier, so maybe that's an example of the law of the few, right? Very few people in the world own a vast majority of the wealth in the world. So to illustrate the law of the few, uh, we go back to our favorite topic of STDs. 50% of the cases of gonorrhea in Colorado Springs uh, were caused by 6% 
of the population. So if you think about how much of a skew that is. So we can look at the case of Darnell Bossman McGee, who uh, infected 30 women with HIV and had over a hundred sexual partners in his life. So in the book, there's even more examples of the spread of HIV and how it follows the law of the few. I'm not going to go through all of them, but read that part if you haven't. So yeah, with STDs, we see the effect of the law of the few, where it's often a few people who infect a lot of people. So talking about diseases, right now we're experiencing a disease, uh, the CV virus, that's been spreading all over China and is now becoming, slowly becoming a pandemic. So if you look at any disease like the CV virus, it doesn't have to be an STD, right? It can be uh, just the, the flu or the CV virus where a few people would infect a lot of people. So one person might infect 10 people or another person might not infect anyone at all. So the disease relies on just a few super spreaders, they call them that give it to a lot of people at once that causes the issue. So that's a signature of epidemics. And why am I talking about STDs and flu and CV virus and all these diseases? Well, in real life, epidemics doesn't have to be necessarily diseases. It could be an idea. So much in the same way that a disease can spread, an idea can spread in the same way. So one person might be super good at spreading an idea and they would let you know 50 of their friends know about whatever it is and then that 50 out of that 50 friends one person might be a super good spreader and then they let 50 of their friends know but the vast majority of people they might not have that much influence right so they might not be able to tell too many people or they might not be able to spread the idea as fast or as effectively so essentially that's the law of the few so the stickiness factor uh, one example that the author gave was Wendy's Where's the Beef commercial. So if you haven't watched the Where's the Beef commercials, go watch them. Just type it in on YouTube. They're pretty funny. So they're all about how the message sticks in your mind, right? So uh, what Wendy's is trying to convey in their commercials is that their hamburgers have more beef than compared to, let's say, a McDonald's or a Burger King or something. And Wendy's was very effective at getting the message across because their commercial went viral. So we call that the stickiness factor. So we say that the where's the beef commercials are sticky. And lastly, we're gonna look at the power of context. The example that the author gave for this one is a very sad case uh, called the murder of Kitty Genovese. So what happened was that she was walking home uh, at night and then she was uh, attacked by an assailant in a dark alley uh, and she was raped and murdered. Uh, and the problem was that it, it wasn't a very sparsely populated place. There were apartments all around that alleyway. And a lot of people even admitted that they heard her scream and they heard her uh, shout for help, but no one called 911. And when the news media picked this story up, they used this as an example of the degradation of society, right? They were saying how people are so bad these days that they would see someone getting murdered and calling for help and they wouldn't even call the police. So what I think the author is trying to say in this example is that maybe we should look at this case more closely. Maybe it's not because of the degradation of society. So this is a typical example that we bring up if you study any sort of sociology or psychology. So the bystander effect is basically everyone is a bystander, everyone who's watching is a bystander, and everyone thinks that someone else is going to help, so no one ends up helping. So the power of context in this case was that in the context of what happened, where it happened in a pretty densely crowded place and everyone heard her scream uh, and everyone thought this is so terrible that someone else has got to call for help. And what ends up happening is that everyone thinks that someone else is going to call for help. So no one calls for help. So that's probably what happened. Uh, and that's the power of context. So the context to a situation is very important. Now, if this murder and this case had happened in an alley where, I don't know, maybe only one person saw it, then it's very likely that that one person would have called the police. But because it happened in a very crowded place with a lot of people watching, that's what caused Kitty Genovese to be murdered and no one called for help. So I think that wraps it up for chapter one. I'm sorry if the text is a little small. I'll post all the notes in the description in case you have trouble reading this. I try to fit it all in one board, but maybe I wasn't too successful at that because it's kind of dense. So uh, I'll leave all the notes down in the description. So if you want to follow along the notes, just click on the little read more button 
on the description and follow along there. So yeah, next week we're going to talk about chapter two and we're going to delve further into the story and further find out what the tipping point exactly is and how small things can make a big difference. And as always, be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'll leave the links down below in the description. Be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing if you like the series. With that being said, I'll see you next week. So those three major parts being the law of the few, the power of context, and the stickiness factor. Sorry if I said those out of order.